you know, finding X sub C um, can be difficult. Uh, the formula, you know, doesn't look very user friendly sometimes, um, but it's not impossible. What you just got to do is you just got to take your time. You can't try to do too much at once with this formula. <laughs> you also have to understand, you know, how to use your prefixes and either do your powers of 10 or change them to decimals or something, you know, that allows you to get the correct answer. Because where most people miss these, it's, it's normally the prefixes. Um, now, <clears throat> calculators are all different. So if I'm looking at finding X sub C, and I've got C is 20 nanofarads, and F is 500 hertz. Well, hertz, there's no prefix. Sometimes hertz has kilo. Sometimes it doesn't. So there is no prefix with kilo, but there is a prefix with farads and nano. Okay? So I write down my formula where X sub C is 1 divided by 2 pi FC. I substitute, okay? The best way to do this, I'm just going to tell you, is to multiply this out to where you get this answer down here in the denominator. So if you have your calculator with you, you need to try this right now, okay? Punch the numbers in as I have, multiply them together. Because that's the only way to learn how to do this. So... You know, I've got a graphing calculator. I also have my one and done calculator, I call it. Why do I call it one and done? Well, I call it one and done because it only shows one thing at a time. Um, I will always recommend, let me try to get a better angle here, using calculators that shows everything as you type them in. Doesn't have to be a graphing calculator. I mean, you can get a TI-30, uh, I think it's uh, the blue one, for about $12. Okay, but these 30 X's, 36 X's, you know, they're one and done. And it's hard to keep track of what you're doing. It's also hard to enter in all of this because that's not how this calculator kind of is designed. You know, you can do one thing at a time. You just have to remember where you are. You also have to understand how to enter in prefixes. Okay, powers of 10. So what I can do is I can do my 6.28, and then you'll notice I hit times and then the 500. So again, one and done. And then I hit times again, and now I'm going to multiply that 20 times 10 to the negative 9. Well, you've got a button here, EE, and EE represents times 10. So when you press EE, -E, so if I press 20, EE, -E, it's coming up with my power of 10 that I need to enter. Don't do times 10 again. This already is set up to be power of 10. So I press my 9 and then make it negative. And then I hit equals. So that's how I get the point zero 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 six two eight. Okay. Um, <clears throat> once I get that, what most calculators have on it, they have either a 1 over X button or an X negative 1. So instead of me taking 1 divided by that number, I can just press my 1 over X because whatever number's in here, that's your X. So if I do 1 over X, I get my answer, which is 15,923. 0.5668, I round it to the nearest whole number because I need to change it to kiloamps because I'll oftentimes, most of the time, you know, your ohms are going to, or excuse me, not amps, ohms, your ohms are going to be kilo ohms if they can do it. So in this case, you're not going to see 15,924, you're going to see 15.9k ohms. K means a thousand. Don't overcomplicate that. Um, your decimal point would be here, so I move it left three places to get the 15.9, okay? So the only way you're going to get better at finding X sub C is to, is to practice doing it. So just do, do this problem on your calculator. Um, pause the video if you need to, because I'm going to turn this page over and do another example, but practice doing this stuff.
Okay. So my other example is very similar to the first one, except I've added for frequency 20 K Hertz. So 20 kilohertz, 20,000 hertz, okay? Uh, formula's the same. So here's where you always have choices, okay? There's lots of different ways to do these. Um, I again enter my 2 pi, 6.28. That's 2 times 3.14, in case you didn't realize that. Kilo is 20 times 10 to the third. You could just put 20,000 if you want to. That's perfectly fine. Here you got 350 times 10 to the negative 9. Now one of your options also, if you don't like doing these prefixes, you know, you could just move this decimal point nine places left. So this would be one, two, three, six more zeros to the left. I mean, it just can get to be big numbers. That's why uh, in engineering notation, they use these prefixes because they don't want to write out these big long numbers either you know to the right of the decimal or left of the decimal so they shorten the actual digits by using prefixes but you can certainly change them now you know I'm gonna do my 6.28 times 20 this time I'm gonna do kilo so I do EE3 that's 20 times 10 to the third and my picture's not real good here. Must be the lighting. Okay. There we go. See, that's, that is 20 times 10 to the third. Don't do an extra times 10. That's where many people make mistakes. Then I'm going to take that one times. And see, it keeps giving me answers as we go. 350. Uh-oh. I pressed 250. So 6.28. And that's another reason why I prefer the calculators where you can see everything because you can you can edit and not have to start all over again. Um, times 20, hold it, 6.28 times 20 EE3 times 350 and then times 10, and I'm going to do, again, negative 9. So I have to do the 9 first and then the negative. That's why these calculators are fine, but there's things you kind of do counterintuitively, which means you kind of do things a little backwards sometimes, okay? And then I hit equals. So that's how I get the point zero four three nine six. And then, again, you can either just do 1 divided by that or... Press that 1 over X button or X negative 1 button. Because that, that right there is 1 divided by that. And I get 22.7. Since there's it's not, you know, 22,000 or something, I just leave it as ohms. Okay? So, hopefully, um, this helps you. Because I do know that X sub C is a big problem. And then what happens is, if you mix that, miss X sub C then the rest of your problem is going to be incorrect because you've got to use the uh, X sub C, finding X sub C to get the rest of your size of your triangles. So hopefully this helps. Um, you know, watch my other examples. Watch all the examples you can to help you do this stuff.